it was a way to keep our minds off of what was going on. And I was able to give 110% of my undivided attention to him, which kind of it boosted my morale for sure. <laughs> you know, it kind of gave me a new, new meaning to come to work every day, you know, a new reason to be happy and all that. Guys, just skin and bones that fleas everywhere. It's like during high school, for example, they give you those, you know, plastic babies you and another person have to take care of. That's kind of what it was like, just instead of, you know, two people and a baby, it was 40 grown men in the desert with a puppy. Somebody came up to me about two days later and said, Okay, so you have about three hours to figure out what to do with this dog, or we just have to kind of let it go back into the wild, you know, hope for the best. Morally, I wouldn't be okay with myself ever if I just let the dog back go. So I went, oh hell. So I took care of the, you know, took the puppy and decided to take custody. Zero, we are leaving cargo. So he's uh, doing well. <laughs> Interesting what's going on around. And then about nine grand in donations and six months later he was back in the U.S. <laughs> mom I said hey mom so this is the situation you know can I keep him at your house for a few months until I get back she goes well let me think about it I'm like well I really hope you say yes because he's on his way <laughs> I was stoked to find him honestly because I came back and you know I was one of those <clears throat> when I saw him I knew that I had done good Bucky. What are you doing, Tane? Hey, Tane. Thanks, Buck.